I wanted to make a video about solar, specifically about grid hybrid solar, which is what we're looking at right here with this system. So most people don't realize, but when you install a general grid tied photovoltaic system, which means that the system itself feeds your house, but it also feeds power back to the grid, there's all sorts of safety switch gear that they install when they build a system like that, specifically rapid shutdown. They put the rapid shutdown systems in so that if your house, which is ostensibly becoming a power plant when you put something like this in, is still producing power when there's a problem with the power lines, they wanna make sure that there's no other power systems or sources putting electricity back onto the grid so that the linesmen don't hurt themselves. The problem with this is that the rapid shutdown on these grid tie systems also means that your house is now no longer being supplied by power, which is why a lot of people end up trying to get these systems in the first place so that they can make a green choice but also have a resilient power supply. So a grid hybrid system is a little different and it has different intelligence within the system in order to ensure that when this, the lines go down or the main system goes down, you can continue to have power. So the system that we're looking at right now has a 12 kilowatt array. It's got uh, a solar edge um, optimizer system in the background, so the brains essentially. It has special switch gear that will allow it to integrate or allows it to integrate with a power wall, two actually. So we've got up to almost 30 kilowatt hours of energy stored in the house downstairs. And so in the event of a power outage, the first uh, power will be supplied by the solar array if the sun's shining. If there's no sun shining because it's in the middle of the night or the middle of a winter storm, the second tier of power will come from the Tesla power wall downstairs until it's exhausted. And once the Tesla power wall reaches a certain threshold, then the generator will kick on, which will then um, charge those batteries as well as supply the household needs as well. So this ensures that there's always at least one, two, three days, depending on how much power the household is consuming in battery storage. And then once the battery storage is exhausted, assuming that you haven't had any sun for those one to, two, one to three days, then the generator will kick on. The generator in here is propane because the client wanted to be off the natural gas grid in the event that it went down. Now, if you are familiar with generators, you know that a 10 kilowatt generator will burn through 2,000 gallons of propane relatively quickly. And so we made sure that the solar array was sized large enough such that it would only have to run, the generator that is, for short periods of time in the winter time, in the event of an outage. So together, that system creates a really redundant supply of power. We've got the grid as one source, we've got the solar arrays, which are the backup source, and then we've got storage downstairs, which can take the surplus energy collected during the day from the solar panels, store it in batteries, and then should both of those two systems be exhausted or not producing, then we've got the backup generator, which kicks in um, hopefully only during the winter months. And so that's exactly how a grid hybrid solar array more expensive but I think they have the redundance that most people are looking to get when they get a solar system. Hopefully you found that video interesting guys. If you did give me a thumbs up. If you're interested in more information about renewable energy, permaculture, water harvesting, food production, resilience, hit the subscribe button. We've got lots more content coming. I love talking about this stuff and I love sharing my information with you guys so I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks so much guys.